Hello and welcome back to hopefully a shorter what sold video this week. Uh, we did have some fantastic uh, feedback on last week's video, probably not so much around the length. Uh, so for those that don't really know how YouTube works, you need to get back to that nine minute mark to really get any advertising money. Um, I thought I'd compromise and stop at 43 minutes. So <laughs> with the clock starting, uh, we're going to get straight into it now. So I did mention in today's podcast that we've actually changed uh, streaming software. So one of the uh, suggestions from last week's video is to have actually clearer flipwise data so you can actually read it. Uh, this program I'm using, I'm not even gonna try and pronounce it. You can get to the podcast on Tuesday <laughs> to try and work out how much I screwed it up. Um, I'm gonna flash the data up now and we're gonna move quite quickly through the what solds. I've picked out eight for the week. Um, and there's a bit of a theme going on for this uh, what sold video. So you can actually work out what it is. Um, I'll let you know towards the end. So this is the Flipwise data for this week. I will bring myself out of the screen and we go. So this week we actually sold $1,876 with the stock. Um, and out of that, the profit margin was $934. So a little bit lower than last week. So we, I think from memory, we were just shy of $1,000 or just over $1,000. Uh, net 934 which, this week. So which is quite pretty still good for a weekly uh, profit margin. Uh, the average cost of goods, or sorry, the average uh, sales price did drop down a little bit to $29.31. However, the profit margin for every item that we sold was $14.59. And that's also down a little bit as well. The reasoning behind that for is because I did sell a lot of a little toy that I normally sell quite a lot of uh, this week. Um, there's a very big orders in that respect. So whilst I did sell a couple of things worth three, four, five hundred dollars um, that was offset by things in variation listings where people normally pick up you know, six or seven items uh, ranging from $1.99 to $15. So that kind of levels it out from that perspective. So what I'll do is I'll quite quickly scroll down to the bottom. Really, uh, the big ticket winner this week was the Facebook Marketplace as per normal. Uh, we did have a USA in that from what I told you last week is that's actually stuff that I import from the States. Uh, Salvos, Lifeline, Target, which is uh, retail arbitrage. Uh, Salvos and Lifeline are our thrift stores, as you'd remember, and Vinnie's as well. So as you can see there, I'm moving away from thrifting primarily in a thrift shop or an op shop in Australia, um, relying probably heavily on Facebook Marketplace, too heavily if you, if you ask me, <laughs> but lucky I can get the stock from that perspective um, and also bringing stuff in from the States. So I spent $331 on new inventory on the week. Um, that's a bit skewed because I did go away for last week and I did pick up that big massive uh, board game haul that I probably showed you on Instagram. I'm not too sure. I did pick up another board game today for $60, which has also boosted that up. Uh, that board game I picked up today, I've listed it for $550. Definitely keep an eye on board games. As with anything, you need to do your research and obviously know what you're looking for, but that's a, uh, a niche that I'm quite enjoying at the moment. So the cost of goods sold was $335. Uh, marketplace fees were $343. And shipping labels is about $265. I've still got two orders at this time that are currently outstanding. So I would suggest that $934 is probably kind of going to come closer to $900 after I do those labels. Uh, one's an international PlayStation to the States and one's 17 of those little buggers uh, that Grumpy Granny doesn't like me talking about. So average time to list is seven days. That goes back through to the board games and some books that I bought from Lifeline before I went to Bay, went to Bay last weekend and catching up on this long weekend. Uh, the average month to average time to sell has dropped uh, from five months to four months and the return on investment is 121%. So what I'm gonna do now is quickly jump into the data and hopefully you can still see me. <laughs> so what we've done today is a bit of a theme, right? So I picked this up from the Salvos. Uh, I didn't think that long ago, but apparently the end of July, it was a book. Um, is, everyone knows my stance on books. However, like I've said before, is that you know, I will sell anything that makes me a profit. So this is called Murder Your Employer, <laughs> which, to me, I found it amusing. I brought it back to work just to show the guy that sits next to me. Um, we had a bit of a chuckle, and that's primarily the reason I picked it up for. I didn't really think it was going to be worth as much as it was. It's not worth obscene amounts of money. I paid $3 for it. Uh, if it wasn't worth money, I was just going to leave it on my desk just to send people a, a message. Uh, I did sell it for that $44 on a... Basically, I think I running, was running a 20% off coupon for the long weekend. Um, it came through and I made $22.66 after fees and postage. Uh, so basically, the next one I'm moving on to now, and this is something that I showed you probably a couple of months ago now, so about two months apparently. Uh, so these are actually the Lego instruction. They sent me an offer for $90. 
I had them listed for $100. So after all the stuff that came out of it, it came to $71.25. These literally cost me nothing. Um, I bought two massive big tubs, so probably about 40, 40 kilos of Lego instructions. Uh, so I think I worked them out to be about $0.05 cents each. So these are probably about 2 dollars cents each for each booklet. Um, so literally these are the ones you need to look out for. I have done a, a video on Lego instructions before, so by all means go back to the videos and watch it if you want to know what to look for. However, I do have other instructions listed probably around that $300 mark, and they're only for instruction booklets only. Uh, so I got positive feedback with this. The guy was very happy. Um, Christmas is coming up, so that might be a little bit of a hint of what the overall theme is, so keep an eye out for Lego instructions. It comes back down to knowing what you're actually sourcing, right? Knowing what Lego sets are in demand. If you are looking at like Lego Ninjago or Lego City or something along the lines of that, do a deep, deep dive into those instructions because they, they mass produce those sets. Uh, the Emerald Knight was a very limited release in 2009, I believe. Um, so very, very under the radar set, hence why I got this price for the instructions. I know I promised you all a Lego investing video and I probably will film that over the next couple of days. Uh, my daughter's heading off to Japan so I can borrow her room. <laughs> so next, we're getting into this one. So basically this is a DVD of Goosebumps season four. The reason why this one sold for is because Halloween's coming up, which is primarily <laughs> the theme of this, the episode, right? So we're looking at seasonal items. These are the ones you want to be getting on top of now. If you've got any Halloween stuff, you've got any Christmas stuff, you've got any Thanksgiving stuff, put it on eBay now because this is the time of the year. You gave it those more momentum and get all that stuff out of the door. So I paid, I think, $3 from Vinny's for this one. And that's probably that Vinny's uh, little tag that you've seen on the previous thing uh, worked out to be $11.31 profit after all said and done I normally send these untracked via stamps so this is just two $1.50 stamps goes out the door um, they've already left positive feedback so they're quite happy in that respect and now we're looking at Funko because I have said previously uh, be very careful if you are sourcing Funko and the reason why the Funko items are selling for me uh, and I've sold two or three of these guys in the last couple of weeks is because Dragon Ball Dama is coming out. So Dragon Ball Dama is actually a new series from the late um, creator of Dragon Ball and I'm not going to pronounce his name because I uh, don't want to pay him any disrespect and have his fan base chase me with a stick. So Corrin was its flocked. He was actually a Crunchyroll exclusive. So Crunchyroll is a streaming service for anime. Um, this is one of the things that I sourced from America. So this is kind of that international uh, arbitrage. <laughs> I don't know if I've created a new word. So not really much profit in respect to Corin. Um, like I said, that I normally, I think he was about 6 or $7 US because he was on special at the moment. Um, free shipping to my storage container in Florida. Then what happens then is I pay a big chunk of money to ship them all over and just split it evenly depending on how many items I've got in the parcel. So Corin came over with probably... 20 or 30, 40, 50 other things. So it was quite negligible in the price of what he actually charged on top of the postage for that. He was a replenishable stock. So he is something that I get on a constant basis. Not so much anymore, because like I said, I'm, I'm quite off Funko at the moment and very careful in regards to actually sourcing that kind of product. Personally, I think that Funko is probably going to cease to exist in the capacity it is at the moment. So the next one we're going to jump onto is, so this is, uh, something that I actually picked up, and I will bring it up on the full screen. So this is something I picked up uh, a fair while ago, actually, four months ago. So I picked up a whole bunch of uh, audio receiver equipment, like a dictaphone and all these, like a um, kind of a Walkman, like cassette tape with it that takes the micro cassettes from a gentleman that was a bird watcher. He was cleaning out. Everything was immaculate. Everything worked. Charged me $80 for a big box of electronics. I think I charged, I sold the, um, the Walkman receiver, bird majiggy thing for about $300. Um, this is probably getting towards the end of what the stock was actually left. Uh, it's just basically a microphone that you plug into a to a port like your phone or, or anything along the lines of that, and it does from that perspective. So I did sell it for $46, so $35.99 plus shipping. Uh, I was quite happy to move it on. It literally cost nothing. Uh, it sold pretty much instantaneous at that three four hundred dollar mark. So everything else became negligible, if anything. So definitely keep an eye on little things you probably would bypass. If I seen this as a thrift shop per se, I'd probably pass it by and probably wouldn't give it too much thought. But it was just in the bag or in the box with all the other stuff. I was literally going to bulk it up and sell it in that capacity. I did do some research and found that it sells pretty decent by itself. So here we are. <laughs> so getting on to the next one now. 
I will flick back to the screen. This one's really hard, this screen. <laughs> so I'm not really used to bouncing around. It's a new program. So going back to uh, my beloved books, yeah, everyone knows what I think about books. So this plays back on the Halloween, I suppose, trope. If you remember, I think it might have been uh, a couple of weeks ago, it might have been a bit longer. Uh, I did an Instagram story, and I think I may have showed it on a Friday night live as well, like a, a demonology witchcraft book. This was from the same bulk lot that a lady sold me. It ended up costing me $7.50 each. I think I paid $40 for four books, remember, from memory. Uh, oh, sorry, $30 for four books, and this was one of them. So they cost me $7.50 each. So this one I uh, originally had it listed for $125. I think the the twenty percent coupon scooped it up, and someone picked it up for ninety nine dollars plus ten dollars ninety shipping. It went in a small uh, padded mailer, um, and it's gone. So basically, like I've said numerous times before, my stance is to pretty much any time of the day, I will print labels off. I'll slap it on about three four hundred meters away from where I live. There's actually parcel lockers for Australia Post. What I normally do is go out there, and so I wasn't too concerned with that regard. It's very on par to what actually is selling in the in the range for this uh, for this particular book. So keep an eye out for anything that's paranormal, anything that's old and vintage, not necessarily fiction. In the, uh, so what this one is, is actually a Goosebumps book. And I've actually got it here. Uh, I better bit cover the thing. So this is Goosebumps uh, Werewolf Skin. It's one of the later ones. And I did mention it in a, a video a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> which Jodo had a go at me about. Uh, so basically it's book 60. And I think I've said before is that the later books in a series, especially towards the end of them winding down, uh, Goosebumps being a prime example. This one, to my knowledge, has never been reprinted, right? So realistically, the only way you can get this is to get one of these ones. Did sell one previously. I paid a dollar for this. Paid a dollar for all the Fear Street um, and all the Goosebumps books. I picked up from that perspective. Those initial ones I sold, I think I showed last week, um, they paid for the whole lot. So it's not too bad from that perspective. So this is just the label that I've reprinted out. I do need to go on Tuesday to the post office to find some of those padded mailers. I just want to slide in a padded mailer from the post office and go south from that perspective because it's over $20. I send it shipped uh, from that perspective. And the reason why this one probably sold a little bit better, it's actually got the um, the original werewolf mask in there as well. So keep an eye out for those. One of the Fear Street books I've got listed as well, it's actually got the original tattoos in there, um, which is pretty cool, actually. <laughs> that was a price. But yeah, so like I said, I sold that one for $35 with free shipping. After all said and done, it came to about $18.75 for the return. So like I said, not particularly big ticket items and not stuff I'm trying to show from this perspective just to say, hey, look, these are big ticket items or all these different things. This is to give you an idea of what to look for. And this is more probably more of a Halloween episode or a seasonal episode uh, just to give you a bit of an idea of what you should be looking out for. Uh, you don't need to go look for the big ticket items. You, know, you can make some decent money on dollar items, $2 items, and for example. Um, you just need to probably push your, your breadth of going out there. So don't necessarily rely on thrift stores. Don't necessarily rely on Facebook Marketplace like I do. Um, yeah, Facebook Marketplace is fantastic for me. But someone like, you know, Grumpy Granny, where her town's only got three people and half of them are undead, uh, it's probably not necessarily the best thing for Facebook Marketplace for those groups. So we're going to move on to the last one now before I get into something quickly. Uh, this one is a Robotech Collector's Edition Blu-ray, 13-disc set. It's A and B region. So I will bring it back up here. So this one I actually got from Crunchyroll as well. So I imported this from the States. Um, I did have someone reach out to me. They took, um, they took the 20% the off coupon to this one. So I did come down. I did have, originally have it listed for $299, uh, sold for $240. From memory, it was just shy of $99. Uh, to buy, yes, I've got $100 of the buying cost. So that was actually to obviously buy it and bring it across to Australia. And what happens then is I had this gentleman reach out to me and ask me if um, it was in stock. And I said, yes, because he's been looking for it for a while. He's been... And the reason why it was so sought after is it actually had a... Um, a buildable robot or a mech in the box and all these different things. These are the things that you need to look out for. Um, from memory, when I was comparing these, when I was importing it to buy it from JB Hi-Fi, keep in mind it is region free, region free in the sense of it's region A and B. Australia's region B, North America's region A. Um, Uncle Wayne <laughs> probably can give you more guidance as to what the different regions are. However, it will still work for him and it will work for the people in the States. So if you are importing videos or DVDs or VHS or Blu-rays, or whatever else, not so much VHS, HS from the states be very mindful is that they may be region locked um this was probably half price of what jb hi-fi was selling it at and potentially part of the reason why he picked it up which is fantastic 
So today I've done two new listings. Uh, yesterday I did six and 16 products sold today and 10 yesterday. So over the last week, I've done 23 listings, which is a lot more than the two that I did in the previous week. 64 products sold, 45 products sold the previous week. Yeah, and very negligible with the, the profit margins between the two there. You may have some people telling you to list daily, which I agree with in some capacity. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm not a sycophant in the, in the sense of saying, hey, look, uh, I'm going to tell you one way or another because regardless, there's only quantifiable data. No one knows for sure. No one works at eBay, especially ones that you watch on YouTube. So take it with a grain of salt as to what people are actually telling you. Um, do your own research. Do your quantifiable data from that perspective. So the difference between the products sold this week to last week is a lot more skylanders, right? So every time someone buys a variation in this morning, uh, someone bought 19 skylanders in one order. So that's something that's obviously playing into that product sold. Can I sell more if I listed more? Probably, but you know, I do have a full-time job. So it's not my, you know, my sole source of income. <laughs> so be very mindful of that. So it is doable. By all means, do your own research and do all those different things. The keyword for this week is eight. So let me know in on Instagram. You'll probably work out what that is on the podcast if you watch it on Tuesday. And before I wrap up, I had some people ask me about what's a fig pin. So I'll get rid of that. I mentioned the fig pin XL, which was the, the Vegeta and oh, sorry, Gogeta and Broly. These are what fig pins are, right? So you can't really see, but they're kind of a collectible. They're a pin. This is Mickey Mouse from Kingdom Hearts. Um, this in itself was a US exclusive, very rare to come across. Import these kind of things. Do your research, go into Reddit posts, go to Facebook groups, go to all these different things. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's how I made some decent money last year, importing uh, Oogie Boogie and um, Jack Skellington Bears and all these different things. So keep an eye on those different groups to keep an eye out of what they're actually asking because they will tell you, like, they are so easy to. Um, do some really quick research as to what's selling from an RA perspective. A lot of people will mention that we can't get it in Australia, like build a bear, for example. Uh, yeah, it's um, coming out in the UK and coming out in the US. That's an opportunity. So what you could do is basically gather some interest, ascertain how you're going to get that product over here because a lot of people are lazy. And they'll just basically pay the convenience fee to have it delivered to them. Or well, you keep an eye on the podcast if you want your chance to win one of these packs. Um, I will be giving away number two out of eight on the podcast. I gave you the keyword a little bit earlier. So catch on the podcast on Tuesday just to get obviously the details you need for that. But thank you again. Uh, if you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I think I am probably about the halfway mark this week. Let me know. Um, let me know if I'm going too fast or I'm going too slow. Um, what kind of products you want to see. If you want to see the really high-end products or you want to see the low-cost products, all those different things. I kind of choose the most eight interesting ones to me over the course of the week. But anyway, let me know in the comment section below uh, what your favorite sale for the week was, quite curious. And if Q4 is actually seeing an uptick of sales for you. Thanks. Bye.